In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Tech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Malcolm Turnbull. Now, coming up on the uh, coming up after the show, as last week, we've got our Google Hangout happening again. Yes, look, we're going to try and get this right. It'll probably take us forever. By the time we actually get it right, um, every television station in Australia will probably be on the internet. But we're going to try it again. If you would like to join us for our Google Hangout in Pit Lane, the Victory Lap, it's at 10.30 tonight, directly after the show. Just go to our Google Plus page, join the circle there, and uh, you can contribute. You can, be, you can actually appear on camera if you like, if you're that desperate. You come along and also you can ask us questions. It's just a whole bunch of people just sitting down and having a bit of a chat about motorsport, really. That's the Victory Lap coming up directly after in Pit Lane, and you can, of course, catch up with it also on our in Pit Lane YouTube channel. Well, as we said, during the news coming up this weekend is the Shannons Nationals, and one of the competitors in the sport stands will be a Formula 4 driver and he's really stepping up. When you consider most 18-year-olds aren't allowed to drive sort of V8 cars on the road, well this, this weekend our guest tonight will be driving over 750 horsepower worth of V8 Saab. Will you please welcome to Inpit Lane, Thomas Randall. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks Brett, thanks for having me. Am I selling you short on the 750 horsepower or is that about what you've got? Yeah, that's about what I've got. It's a little bit more than what I've got on my Formula 4 which is around 150, 160 horsepower. So. You know, it's a lot to play with, and especially at a track like Phillip Island. And a little bit more than all your mates are giving you know, at school. Are going. You're still at school, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, my last year of uh, studies, uh, VCE, and, um, you know, everyone's starting to get their P plates, and people always say, oh, you want to drag? But <laughs> I know in my head that there's this 750 horsepower sub that I could just beat them. <laughs> Yes, I suppose you, you've got, you know, whatever they do, you know, whatever you can do, guys, I can do better. Yeah, exactly. And you've got, and you've got the, the footage to be able to prove it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, footage is great, you know, um, to look at data and stuff as well, but, you know, it's great for memories. And when you're driving something as, you know, powerful as that, it's just, it's awesome. Because you did give it a run out at, uh, out at Winton in, in a state round earlier this year, but this is your first national round and you will come up against the two people who are virtually unbeatable in sports sedans in uh, Darren Hossack and Tony Ricciardello. Do you, uh, this is a car that's definitely capable of beating them. Do you think you'll be up to, up to giving them a real challenge this weekend? Oh, well, it, it, you know, it comes down to experience for one and, um, you know, for me, I'm yeah, 18 years old. I'm a lot younger than Darren and Tony, but, you know, they've been racing since 2000, 2001, so 15 years in the field. But I've watched them since Dad's been racing and, you know, sometimes they just put a foot wrong, but very rarely. And, you know, the amount of speed that they've, they've got and, like, last round at Queensland, you know, Tony Riccadello broke a lap record, so they're still going really fast and, you know, it's going to be pretty tough to beat them, but... At the end of the day, everyone wants to win, and it'd be pretty special. And that's the thing that's coming up this weekend at, uh, at Shannon's. When you have a look at the card, I mean, between yourself and the Formula 3s and the sports races, and even the Radical Cup, the V8 cars in the Radical Cup at the moment, you've got sort of three or four categories there that are all potentially as fast, if not, in your case, faster than the V8 supercars. Yeah, well, in Formula 3 case, you know, they're really light, you know, don't have too much power, but the aero, you know, really helps them. And sports sedans have always been quicker than the V8 supercars. And it, the thing about the Shannon's Nationals is that you've got so many categories that are racing on the weekend. And when you've got categories that can go as fast as that, it's what you know, people love to see. And it's, um, no, it's good. It's, it is great value on the weekend because it's a bit like a state round, really. I keep saying that, you know, like in terms of value for money, state racing is very hard to beat. But when you look at this weekend, you've got eight categories running over the weekend and eight really good categories, um, including the V8 touring cars, which, you know, are basically V8 supercars, but they're just not allowed to call them V8 supercars because V8 supercars, of course, won't let them because V8 supercars are... <laughs> um, 
So, so if, if people want to come down, I mean, what's the advantages? Like, compared with going out to somewhere like Sandown last weekend, um, what are the advantages if people want to come down? Can they come and you know, you know, talk to you and actually, you know, look at the car and all that sort of terrifying things which you can't do at a V8 round? Yeah, well, entry is only like $30 or $20 for the weekend, as, apart from a V8 round where at Ipswich it was like $100 for spectators to enter. And it's hard for spectators to come and see the cars when at Shannon's Nationals, you know, they're allowed to see the cars and pretty much allowed to watch them anywhere. And when you've got eight categories and you can see what, probably three categories within a 60 minute span, it's, it's a lot of racing that, you know, spectators can see. And it's, as you say, on the most spectacular race circuit in Australia. I take it you, you obviously enjoy Phillip Island, but have you, have you run in this car down at Phillip Island before? No, I've only run in the sports sedan twice. Uh, one was a test day at Winton and the second time was the state round at Winton. So I've only ever raced a Formula Ford at uh, Phillip Island. Some trepidation looking this weekend. I mean, very big difference between Phillip Island and Winton. Oh yeah, Phillip Island, you know, you use all six gears. Top gear, you can get to probably 290, 300 k's an hour, depending on how you exit the last corner. But Winton, you can only use five gears there and it's a lot slower compared to Phillip Island. And Phillip Island's got a much smoother surface, so it's it's really fast and flowing, and it's where sports and ends should be. The cars have uh, the, the cars have been totally rebuilt. What have you? Any improvement to it, or has it just basically been a sort of maintenance thing? Um, it's more sort of a maintenance thing, you know, just little tiny improvements here and there, but nothing too drastic since when it was last run in end of 2011. So it's it's had a new uh, like a paint scheme on it. Um, but other than that, it's really Well, just... that's got to be good for an extra, what, 20 horsepower or something, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, probably 30, 40, 50 horsepower, I think. And also the shim behind the wheel. So <laughs> there's a difference there. there. Well, of course, people keep forgetting it. It is a national championship winning car. I mean, James Sierra took it in his first year, took it to a, a national championship. Yeah, in 2010. Um, now that was a good year. James won um, against Darren Holsack. Ricky Dello wasn't racing that year, but still to beat Darren Holsack was pretty good. And then 2011, it was run once in Phillip Island. And... It had just been sitting around collecting dust till the middle start of this year. Okay, well, we'll find out uh, more about this weekend and also get your uh, get some of your impressions of what we saw on the weekend too, um, both at Sandown and overseas as well. But uh, Thomas, we'll be back with you in just a moment, and we'll be back with all of you uh, right after this break. You're watching In Pit Lane right here on Melbourne's own Channel Thirty One. Welcome back to In Pit Lane here on Channel 31. Our guest tonight is Thomas Randall. And, and Thomas, uh, we saw in the news before Formula E, the first round of, uh, of that particular series. Last week we had Robert Delgren on the show and I asked him if he saw our future, his future in a, an electric racing car and he said probably at his age, no, but you're only 18. It's probably, it's almost certain that at some stage you're going to definitely be driving a hybrid, but probably driving a, an electric car as well. What did you think of the uh, open? round? Oh, you know, the FIA put a lot of money into the opening round of the Formula E. I mean, it was at Beijing Street Circuit around there. Um, they've got some great drivers. Uh, it's amazing what they can do now with the, with the technologies and having cars run on just batteries. Um, the racing is still, you know, pretty good. Uh, I think that's what it comes down to. As even Robert said last week, it's all about, you know, racecraft. And, and I think that was really shown last week, especially what happened at the last corner between Prost and um, Heidfeld. Um, so who's blamed that? Firmly on, firmly on Nicholas Prost? Uh, well, his last corner, last move, you know, desperate stuff can come at desperate times. Um, a lot of people are saying Prost and also because he's French, I guess, as, as they say. Um, but, you know, it was a pretty bold move um, by Heidfeld, but coming down to what happened was, you know, Prost turning into him. And the interesting yeah. thing is this weekend at the Circuit of the Americas, they'll be teammates in the Rebellion Racing LMP1. So they're going to have to get over any problems they had. They're going to have to get over pretty quickly. They're nice looking cars, aren't they, the, the Formula E? Yeah, um, yeah, they're really nice. Um, you know, they're de designed by Delara and um, top speed of, I think, 225 kilometres an hour, which isn't super fast, but, you know, it's just the beginning of hybrid technology. They've got great acceleration, um, but, yeah, they are quite a beautiful looking car. So is that something that you're looking at in the future, like with, with your your young age now, are you sort of, you know, like most of the drivers here where you're looking at a V8 supercar future or might you be looking at some alternatives overseas? Because there seems to be things opening up now with GT3 and World Endurance Championship and Formula E. Yeah, well, the new thing, the new alliance with Formula 4 this year, if you win the series, you know, you get the two-day test in America yeah. for, the, um, for the Pro Mazda series. Um, so I think that's definitely a good step that's being taken by the Formula Ford this year and everyone's going to try and win the series to get to that. But um, 
you know, there's definitely options in the US. Europe's pretty expensive. Um, you've got to have a pretty wealthy background for that. But that's what your, yeah. your dad's loaded. <laughs> he's absolutely. Oh, he's rolling in it. Everyone knows that. <laughs> I don't know about that. He's sitting in the corner there now going, am I? <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to keep quiet. <laughs> but um, no, nah, I don't think my future so far would you know, look at uh, hybrid technology. Everyone wants to raise something that makes a lot of noise and a lot of power. And, you know, going into, as I said before, a sports and that's a lot more noise than what uh, yeah, the Formula E makes. That's considerable. I mean, you're looking at probably what about, you know, the equivalent of about six of those Formula E's just in the car that you're going to be driving on the weekend. Yeah, well, the Formula E sounds like, you know, a remote controlled car. And a couple of years ago, Darren was, you know, black flagged for exceeding the track noise at Phillip Island. So, you know, there's just incredible noise difference. Is that, is that something that you're going to have to look at this weekend? Because we did see the, the sports, the last four times the sports stand raced out there, it did turn into a bit of a fast. We had people sort of cruising, you know, rolling down the main straight to, to keep under the, the, the ridiculous limits out there. Have, is that something in the rebuild that you've looked at to try and keep the noise down while not sacrificing too much power? Oh, we've read the regulation, um, but when Dad was there last year, you know, he wasn't backing off on the straight and he wasn't black flagged or, you know, no one spoke to him. So hopefully this year the same thing doesn't happen. And that's the problem with these noise regulations. I mean, it depends on, you know, atmospheric conditions, where they've put the, where they've put the, the, the monitoring equipment. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a lottery, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, in one of the regulations, it says it's like 30 metres from the track or something. They take 95 decibels. So <laughs> you're not going to know when you come on the straight what you're doing. But, you know, you, we've got earplugs in and it's still loud for us, but everyone wants to hear, you know, the loud roar of a V8 engine coming down Phillip Island Strait. You mentioned that you're racing in Formula Ford at the moment. This weekend at Phillip Island, of course, we've got Formula 3. Formula 3, fabulously fast cars, really beautiful cars, um, an international formula. For some reason, it just has never really taken off in Australia. I mean, for someone like yourself, does that frustrate you when you look at these great cars and it really hasn't developed the way it should? It's frustrating in a way because... Overseas, Formula 3 is a big category, the European F3 Championship, and they race at tracks like Macau, and you know they're with the DTM series. And in Australia, it's it's hard because when you're over in Europe, you know everyone's got the money, but in Australia, it's it's a bit difficult because you've got people who just are just doing it for fun, and you've got like say five or six or seven or eight people that are doing it seriously. And then when you look at Formula Ford, that's at like an affordable price for people, and uh, most people go to that instead. So. Formula 3, you know, could be good with a lot more drivers in it and a lot of competitive drivers. What about this uh, new Formula 4? I mean, we've heard, we heard a lot about it for a while and it seems we've gone a little bit quiet on the Formula 4 front. Um, have you looked into that at all as a, as a potential for next year? Um, not too much. Um, we're really waiting for, you know, something proper to come out or when a deal is done. So they, and they'll have to hurry. I mean, let's face it, we're in, we're in, in mm. September already. Yeah, if it's, if it's going to be, sometimes it's got to be now. I mean, Formula Ford just released a calendar for next year, which is yeah. great. Yeah, so they've got to know whether they're going to bring a series in next year or not. How do you think uh, F Formula Four will affect Formula Ford? I mean, you know, that's assuming it even gets up and running next year. Well, if people are going to race in Formula Four, I think that they should begin in Formula Four because that's where you learn basic car control. And I think what's going to happen is, if it takes off, is that kids are going to come straight out of carts and go into Formula Four. But when you're in a wings and slicks car, you know, car control isn't so crucial there. But when you drive Formula Ford, you know, that's really the, the basis of learning how to control a car. And if you go from Formula Ford to Formula Four, you're going to be a lot quicker. Well, good luck on the on the weekend. Uh, hopefully, I think I think we're looking for showers on on Saturday, so that could make life a little bit interesting. I mean, have you run the car in the wet before? No, I haven't. Uh, on the test day, it started raining, and we didn't go out for that session, so. But when you've got 700 horsepower and in a sports sedan at Phillip Island, it's in the wet too, you know, it's going to be very tentative. That's uh, it's certainly going to get your attention, no doubt. Uh, good luck for the, for the weekend. Good luck for the rest of the season. How many rounds of Formula Ford to go? Uh, there's three rounds. Uh, Wakefield Park, which is coming up mid-October, then Eastern Creek, and the last one's at the 50k plate. Well, look, that's, that's going to be, once again, Island Magic is always one of our highlights and that'll be absolutely huge this year as well. So good luck with it. We'll see you on the weekend. If you're heading down to the Shannon's Nationals, call in and see Thomas. I'm sure he's a very friendly person. He'll say hi. He'll, he'll let you shake your hand. He won't charge you anything for an autograph or anything. And so, uh, Thomas, thanks again for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks for having me again. 
And thank you to you at home. Now, next week we'll have all of the uh, all of the updates from the Shannon's Nationals. We'll have uh, highlights of, uh, of various categories and probably sports stands will be included in that as well if they let us. And also we'll have the uh, next round of the World Endurance Championship is happening this weekend. Mark Webber back in action at the Circuit of the Americas. If you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for any uh, audio coverage via Radio Le Mans, we'll have the links on the In Pit Lane website. Also remember once again, coming up at 10.30 in a few moments time, we're going to have our Google Hangout. We're at Google Plus. Um, you'll see the, uh, the, the link there. Just join us there. If you've got any questions about motorsport in general, about the show, about community television, about that lovely <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull, then uh, by all means, uh, get in touch with us then. So we'll see you next week, same time, 10 o'clock here on Channel 31. For as long as Malcolm lets us, lets us survive, we'll be here. Until next week, from all of us at RMITV and in Pit Lane, good night. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.